What's going on, fantasy football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching The Couch. This is the annual Sleepers and Bust video. We're going to go through each position and give you nice, functional advice, advice that should help you in your drafts, advice that should help you win. I won't just try to name players as this guy's a sleeper, he's going to be a league winner, he's a breakout player, this guy's a bust. I'm going to give you guys some other options in case you don't get them in your snake drafts, in case you miss out on them on the auction, so that way you'd be better prepared for your upcoming drafts. At quarterback, there's really no way you can mess this up except if you panic or and or if you reach i think it's all about getting good value playing it smart knowing when to draft your quarterback not so much about who because there's so many options and then yeah when it's super flex it's a totally different game but you know what it's still the same thing. If you can get those quarterbacks later on in that first tier or you don't miss out on that second tier, you're going to be just fine. But if you keep reaching for quarterbacks or you think you're in one QB mode when you're in a super flex league and you kind of forget and zone out or you're not prepared, uh, then you're going to miss out on all the tier one quarterbacks and all tier two quarterbacks. So that's bad. On draft day, make sure you draft the quarterbacks at the right time. Do it smart. Think about the big picture and stay flexible. So some names to throw out there. If you're in a one QB league, I almost always do this, except if a top five quarterback does fall to me. Like I would draft Mahomes at 3.12 in a 12 teamer, but that really never happens. Like it's it just never happened, or I've never had the 12th pick. So it's a bit unrealistic. Mahomes almost always goes mid round three he's always taken right there so what i like to do is get those quarterbacks that are falling a little bit so i'm always taking justin herbert aaron Rodgers, russell wilson tom brady if i don't get them maybe a Tannehill or a matthew stafford and i like to really draft a second quarterback if i get stafford because although i like stafford a lot he is on a new team could be a little bit inconsistent could take a couple weeks to get the chemistry and timing down but we're here to talk about sleepers so my number one sleeper quarterback is going to be Trey Lance he does have some issues he does need to improve he might start week one I'm just guessing I don't know who's gonna start for the Niners week one I'd say 51% chance Jimmy Garoppolo starts week one but we're gonna see he's ranked about 20 to 24 on a lot of QB rankings I've got him as QB 14 I think he's gonna be a league winner if you can get him in the double digit rounds now, I don't want to reach for him as my QB1. Of course not. I don't want to get him in round eight or nine, but sometimes he's falling. And look, if you can't get him and you like Justin Fields, that's totally fine. Sometimes Justin Fields goes a little bit later. Actually seen drafts where Justin Fields goes earlier than Lance. That's pretty rare though. Look at this guy. Starting week 14, I know playoffs, fantasy playoffs usually start week 15 this year, but just starting week 14, these are the matchups for the Niners. Cincinnati, week 14 then Falcons, then the Titans, then the Texans. That's the fantasy playoff schedule. Trey Lance could be a league winner. So why is Trey Lance going to actually help you win a league? It's not because I love the talent and he's going to put up a lot of fantasy points because like I said earlier, that would contradict what I was saying. You can really go with the, you go with so many quarterbacks. There's so many options and it's not a big difference other than some rare circumstances. We've seen a lot of teams win with a a lot of different quarterbacks and you know what a lot of those quarterbacks were drafted in round eight or later or picked up off the waiver wire like Gardner Minshew or Ryan Tannehill a lot of league winners with QBs like that the reason Trey Lance is going to help you is because this is essentially a hack. You may be able to get away with winning a 12-team league without drafting a quarterback in the first 10 rounds. That's how powerful this strategy is. You could go with literally anybody, like the next guy on my list, Ryan Fitzpatrick. You can draft him. Now, he's going around QB 20. I got him around QB 17. That's where I have him ranked. I'm a little bit higher on him than most, but you could go with Ryan Fitzpatrick, start him while Trey Lance isn't starting or you know i guess there's a shot that he does start 
week one. And then you're going to be just fine. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I mean, he's going undrafted in a lot of leagues. I just did a 14-team draft. That's a deep draft where I got Ryan Fitzpatrick in round 16. And so you can get him for basically free. You can get him off free agency and you get Trey Lance in round 11. That's going to be a killer hack, a great combo for you guys. Now, I don't usually do this, but hey, I'm giving you guys options here. I want you guys to stay flexible. Don't just go RB, 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 or don't reach for tight end and quarterback early and totally screw up the rest of your draft. You want to stay flexible and keep your options open. Be ready to pivot. You can do 100 mock drafts at the same position. Then on draft day, it's going to look totally different. And this actually does happen to me quite a bit. If you're in super flex, you can go get a guy like Bridgewater and Locke, depending on who's starting. Well, that's at least what I got written down in my notes. And then uh, the news came out that Bridgewater is starting, but still Drew Locke in super flex. That could also be kind of cool because Teddy Bridgewater might get benched. We just don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, so you can do strategies like that. You can also go with Cam and Mac Jones. That's a good strategy. Two guys you can get super late if you're in a super flex league. Now, just keep in mind, I just want to say again, that's super flex advice. I don't want you taking uh, Mac Jones or Bridgewater in a, like a 10-team redraft. There's, there's just no need to draft those guys. They're going undrafted. I have no busts here. Okay, you can say I'm cheating or whatever whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm finding a shortcut to this video. That's fine. But I'm trying to give functional advice you can use. Again, the only way you can mess this up is if you reach. So the biggest quarterback bust is the one you reach on. Or uh, in other words, being the first one to draft a quarterback, the first fantasy owner to draft a quarterback almost always loses, right? So last year, Lamar Jackson, you lost. The year before, Patrick Mahomes, you lost. It happens every year. It's a pretty strong theme that the quarterback won when you reach for them, when you or you just, you're the first one to take them, that you're going to lose. Now, I always think out the box. I'm not saying it won't ever happen. I won't saying that if someone takes Mahomes at 3.06, they can't win. I'm just saying be wary of that and don't reach. I think Mahomes at 3.07, really isn't that bad of a pick, but there's people drafting Mahomes um, super early round three, late round two, and you know, I'm I'm not going to put the stamp of approval on that. Can't do it. Moving on to running back sleepers. The video actually really starts here at this point. And when I reference ADP, I'm going to be talking about 12 team redraft, just so you know. And the order I'm going to go by is by ADP. So the first running back I'm going to list off is the one that's being drafted the earliest. And the last running back sleeper I list off will be drafted latest in most drafts. And I think we'll put some kind of like five star system or something, some kind of rating with an emoji here. So you know exactly how how much I love these players, how much of a steal I think they are, or for bust, how much I hate them. We'll put like an X emoji or something. So one X means I don't like them and two or three X's means I really, really hate them. At 7.06, Michael Carter's going off the board, smack dead middle in the seventh round. He is a guy who doesn't have a ton of upside. I love him in PPR leagues. I even love him in half PPR leagues. He's a great value running back. I feel like he's going to be your RB2, but but you're getting him as a RB4 price. He's going to be the starting running back on the Jets. Now, there is going to be some kind of committee, but he's the most talented running back. They went and got him. I like the Jets O-line. I like the new coaching staff. Even if I don't like the new coaching staff, it's got to be about 282 times better than Adam Gase was. And there's just not a lot of competition there for Michael Carter. So I think this is a high floor, kind of low upside play play a guy that I'm targeting in a lot of drafts. I'm just so enamored by where he's going. He used to be going in round eight, uh, but I sometimes have to get him in round six. I'm still comfortable taking him in round six, but hey, uh, just recently I got him uh, again at seven. I got him at 7.06 in the couch league, so very happy with that.
The next guy I have upside is through the roof. The floor is a little bit lower though. Very risky. He's going to take up some roster space or maybe not. Maybe he's a star week one and that's 49ers running back another rookie Trey Sermon. The upside is through the roof. He could be the RB1 for the Niners and any RB1 is going to be amazing. Now there's a lot working against him. Maybe he is a star week one. And then we're going to maybe see a committee. Now they got about five or six running backs there in San Francisco. So I don't know what's going to happen week to week. Right now, Mostert's probably the starter. But everyone is expecting Trey Sermon to get a lot of run. They finally went out and drafted a running back. I know they drafted another one, but Trey Sermon is good at everything. Now, some people say he's not really good at pass catching. That's false. He's not the best pass catcher. He's not an amazing pass catcher, but I think he is a good pass catcher. And compared to a lot of teammates, a lot of running backs on that squad, I think he's going to get a lot of work in the pass game. We know Shanahan likes to throw to running backs. I think the reason we haven't seen a ton of passes thrown to running backs recently is because they just didn't have the personnel. And there's just no way that Shanahan would draft a running back that early who's not going to catch any passes. I don't see it. I think Trey Sermon is going to be excellent goal line back, every down back, pass catching back. But I do appreciate the risk and the possible committee in San Francisco. I respect it a lot. Now he is going late round seven and that's pretty insane. He, you know, he was a guy who, if we drafted like in June or something extremely early like that, he'd be going round 11 or 12 or, or 10, right? But now he's going round seven or eight. That's disgusting. I love him in round nine. So, you know, Michael Carter, I don't mind taking him round six. Trey Sermon, though, round six. And their they're ADPs are really close. I can't do it. I can't take that risk. I can't take the guessing game. I can't take that type of committee. Not for me, but I did want to mention other names here. So Michael Carter, I'd say is a high floor guy. And Trey Sermon, let's say, is a high upside guy. Now, this next guy, um, I mean, there's there's two guys that are that, are, that I love. And uh, they're about tied here. So the next guy, A.J. Dillon, ADP 8.11. You know what? I honestly don't get it why he's going so low. Um, and it's just hitting me right now. I'm think and I, I'm all about the psychology and uh, what the consensus is thinking. Also all about being contrarian and, and zigging when they zag. So I'm really into that stuff. And you know what? I think with AJ Dillon, I think he was everyone's sleeper last year. And he was going around 10, 11, 12. He was going late. And I think he he may have started climbing up the boards too, if I remember correctly, last year. Um, you know, maybe start off round 13, then ended up round 10, closer to September. And I think he hurt a lot of fantasy owners' feelings, and I think it left a sour taste in their mouth. And then the one week he did go off, everyone benched him, except like two people on Twitter. They let me know about that. I think that's why he's going so late. There's no Jamal Williams. A.J. Dillon's a clear RB2 there. We know that Matt LaFleur likes to use two running backs. Like, I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed. He's like, He's got his two running backs. He uses his two running backs. And this is no knock on Aaron Jones. I'm fine taking Aaron Jones in the late first round. I think that's a great pick. I would do it. So I love Aaron Jones. Uh, and Aaron Jones is a great pass catching back. He does it all. He's going to be just fine. But Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers and this offense goes. It's a very good, very smart offense led by Rodgers with a good coach. And they're going to put up points. They're going to put up yards. And so I guess A.J. Dillon's knock is, oh, he won't catch a lot of balls and I play PPR. Well, I don't think he will, but we don't know that. There's bonuses to this. So you're drafting him at his floor, 8.11 for a guy that you can actually start in your lineup. Now, he'll be a little bit touchdown dependent. He's not an ideal start week one or anything, but at 8.11, you don't need to start any player you really draft at 8.11. That's super late. At 8.11, A.J. Dillon's going to be your RB4. Heck, this guy could even fold around 9 or 10 in a 12-teamer. 
So you're drafting him at his floor. Maybe he's going to catch a little bit more passes than we think. You know what? And if Aaron Jones even misses one game, A.J. Dillon is going to just destroy this value getting him. He's going to be so much better than this value. Like, that's insane. So I already think he's good value if Aaron Jones plays 17 games. If Aaron Jones misses time, A.J. Dillon is going to be so much more valuable. If A.J. Dillon catches a few more balls and surprises us, you know, it has happened. It is unlikely, but it has happened with Todd Gurley, you know, with Zeke. Like, we see them catch more balls after they played a couple more years in the league. And even scatbacks, they come in the league thinking they're a workhorse, and then they end up being scatbacks. It does happen. And if it happens here, uh, he's just, he's going to be, he's going to be like a round five guy. That's how good he's going to be. He's going to be closer to Kareem Hunt and people are drafting him like he's just like, like almost like a waiver running back, like a flyer. Next guy, another guy who's like tied with AJ Dillon, how much I like him. And that's Chuba Hubbard, the handcuff of all handcuffs because of how late he's going. I'm not the type of guy to tell you, you need to draft a handcuff or draft someone else handcuff or you know you need to increase your upside by not drafting your handcuff or blah you know what I like getting my handcuffs if I get them late I don't like reaching for them I don't like to panic I I don't need to reach for any of my handcuffs I don't need to reach for any of your handcuffs I don't care Chuba Hubbard is just a good running back with a ton of upside he was an incredible prospect if we rewind two years ago oh my god it was a Chuba Hubbard show we were everyone was talking about him and now he's just like totally forgotten and look at what Mike Davis did I don't like Mike Davis I don't think he's that good but Mike Davis did a lot of things when C-Mac was out. And guess what? Mike Davis is no longer there in Carolina. And you know who vultured from Mike Davis? Curtis Samuel. He's also no longer there in Carolina. Although Chuba Hubbard has basically no value. If C-Mac is healthy, if C-Mac were to miss just one game, Chuba Hubbard would be even better than Mike Davis. I'd rather have Chuba than Mike Davis in 2020. And that's, it's not even close. This is a talented running back, guys. And you know what? It's football. A lot of guys get injured. Running backs get injured 45% of the time and miss at least one full game. That's how likely it is for someone to miss a game in football, especially a running back. So we're looking at these other handcuffs, right? Latavius Murray, Alexander Madison. They're going several rounds ahead. And you know what? Latavius might not even be a real handcuff anymore. Chuba Hubbard, he's going up to round 12 now sometimes, but sometimes he's going like round 14. This is amazing value. Like, always draft Chuba Hubbard if you're looking for an RB5 or an RB6. And if you got C-Mac, this is pretty much a no-brainer to me because of where he's going. See, look, if I got C-Mac, I'm not going to go get Chuba Hubbard in round nine, you know, like some people do with Alexander Madison. I'm not going to do that. I'd compare him more to a unproven Tony Pollard, but I think he's that talented and Tony Pollard's going round seven or eight. And so if I can get like basically a Tony Pollard and I would say that Christian McCaffrey is less durable than Zeke, I'm getting a Tony Pollard here like six rounds after Tony Pollard's going. Running back bust. Austin Eckler is going 10th overall. He's one of my biggest busts. I think people are drafting him early based on two things. One, I think people like him and want to root for him. I think he's a fun player. I think honestly think that goes into it. And the second thing is they're just kind of hoping that he'll get those big plays that he did in 2019 and we just seen one small sample size and that was really it and I don't think he's a real workhorse he doesn't get that many carries you're going to be only relying on explosive plays and look I like him I think he's a good PPR guy but for me I have him right where you would be taking Clyde Edwards Alaire or J.K. Dobbins late round two early round three that's how I see 
Austin Eckler. He's going to be wildly inconsistent. I don't think he's going to finish an entire season. He's just not a workhorse to me. There's only one guy in the league that can really do what you think Austin Eckler is going to be able to do without getting those carries, and that's Alvin Kamara. And people are drafting Austin Eckler thinking he has that type of upside as Alvin Kamara. And I don't see it. I think he should be drafted more like Darren Sproles was on the Saints. A great PPR running back. Austin Eckler is better. He's more explosive. But uh, yeah, I'm calling him more like Darren Sproles than Alvin Kamara if I had to pick between those two. So a guy that I would be taking at 3.01 is going 10th overall. And he's one of my busts. My other bust is becoming less potent because his ADP has dropped since I've been saying he's a bust. And that's Miles Sanders currently going at 4.02. But his ADP was closer to 3.06. At least that's where I've seen him go all the time. Going 3.06. 3.08 right around there before Mahomes was going and now you know definitely uh, Mahomes is going before Miles Sanders yeah he's going to be in a committee if Jalen Hurts plays okay Sanders does have a lot more upside but they just drafted Kenny Gainwell who's a really good running back can catch the ball they still got Boston Scott it's just going to be really tough for me to trust Miles Sanders. He had all the opportunity in the world and underwhelmed both years just a little bit. He was a little underwhelming, never really did it. Look, by this time, I'm either going with a top three tight end or I'd rather even go Mahomes even though I don't do that or I'm drafting a wide receiver. Maybe I can get like a top 13 wide receiver there, a tier two wide receiver or I, I'm going robust RB. I'm just like... There's just really no need for me to get Miles Sanders. Now, if he's somehow sitting in round six like he was in my league, that's insane. Go ahead and take him because, like I said, if that offense is decent, Miles Sanders should still be the RB1 there, and that's going to be great value. But other than that, I would not take him round three. I would not take him round four. Wide receivers. You already know two guys I'm targeting in every draft, Devontae Smith and Antonio Brown. Been preaching that Devontae Smith, much better value in redraft than Jamar Chase. And now I think it's starting to be realized by the rest of the community community that yeah I was able to get Devontae Smith two rounds after Jamar Chase was going also T Higgins was better value I'd say uh, even though the season hasn't started I think people are starting to agree with me more and more so Devontae Smith I have him getting at least 1100 yards just an absolute beast he should be the alpha wide receiver there for the Eagles now there's going to be a lot of tight ends and whatnot but someone's going to throw 3,000 yards or a conglomerate of Flacco and Jalen Hurts is going to throw for 3,000 yards at least, right? Someone's throw 3,500 yards out there. It's got to go to somebody, and I think it's going to go to the best college wide receiver the past two years, Slim Reaper, Devontae Smith. A lot of people love to hate on this guy, and you know what? He is risky. It is a little bit scary, all right? All right, you need me to hold your hand through this? We're going to do it. Look. <laughs> Devontae Smith has never been slowed down because he was skinny. He never got pushed around. There's just, I haven't seen any signs of that happening. But he's going to be great in the NFL. I'm saying at least 1,100 yards. He's going in mid round seven, but I often see him fall to round eight by some leagues that don't really know about rookies and whatnot. Um, now he's crawling up to round six sometimes, but round seven is a perfect spot to take him great value and then we have another guy that i absolutely love and we're in the mid round still here right in the middle of round eight at 8.04 antonio brown now look at these stats antonio brown is so close to chris godwin and mike evans but you're getting him like 70 percent off that price tag now can antonio brown get arrested or get sued or get suspended yes that's all baked into the price you don't have to take him as your wide receiver too like you would those other buccaneers wide receivers you're getting him round eight as your wide receiver three or four now you probably have to take him round seven because people are starting to catch on i think a little bit but if he falls around eight absolutely Absolutely smash that draft button next to his name. Don't hesitate. Late round sleep 
sleepers. Jacoby Myers could be the wide receiver one for the Patriots. Look, the wide receiver one could be Nelson Aguilar as well, who's looked good. But I'm thinking Jacoby Myers is going to put up more fantasy points. And you know what? Does it really matter? You can get Aguilar round 13. That's a great buy right there. You can get Jacoby Myers round 14. We're talking about the end of the draft, guys. Your wide receiver seven. An absolute steal. He should be okay with Cam Newton, but I think he's going to be even better with Mac Jones. And I think that you're thinking that Mac Jones is going to start sooner than later. So Jacoby Myers smashed that draft button. And another guy I added to this list who's just, you know, you're going to hate me for this one. I, I think so. I think you're going to hate me. AJ Green. He's been a stud wide receiver. Look, I like Julio Jones, and this guy's his arch rival. He totally fell off last year, but he totally wasn't trying. He was tired of the Cincinnati Bungles. He didn't want to play for them. And look, he didn't say, I, you know, I don't think he made like a press conference about it or nothing. But when you watch the film, it, it's clear as day. Like he didn't want to play for them. And like, who would? He just got tired of it. Now he's on a team that's a contender, at least let's just call them a playoff team and he might have some juice in the tank. Now, this is a complete flyer. It may not work out, but the good news is, is that AJ Green is your wide receiver seven, and you just drop him. If he looks really bad for one or two games, even one or two, you can drop him. Try to wait three games and see how AJ Green does. And if you're saying he's injury prone, that's fine. What's You're going to lose a round four. This is basically waiver wire territory anyway. So AJ Green's going 14.05. He's going undrafted in a lot of leagues. Like I don't even know why I bring his ADP. He's basically going undrafted. Don't be afraid to take a flyer on AJ Green. And also after two or three games, don't be afraid to drop him. He's that type of player. Here we go. My favorite wide receiver bust. DJ Chark going in round seven. I absolutely absolutely don't get this look I get that he put up a thousand thirty one yards and ten touchdowns oh wait that was Alan Hearns um oh uh sorry DJ Chark did much less than that uh in 2019 he got 1,008 yards and eight touchdowns so he did worse than Alan Hearns so uh, I guess we like to root for this guy too, just like Austin Eckler. We like, I mean, who likes that baby? Ba dude, 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 no one likes the baby shark song anymore. That's all played out. Like, I get it. He was a favorite. Everyone liked his name. Oh, he's got a cool name. It sounds like shark. I think people like to root for him. They like to romanticize his 2019 year, which was pretty good, but um, it was like worse than Alan Hearns year let's just say the same so we're trying to see if he can be like Alan Hearns again uh, but you know what LaVisca Chenault is there he has a guaranteed role he's going to get a lot of manufactured touches and we have Marvin Jones there who I think is going to be the traditional wide receiver one we have too many wide receivers here and I don't even think DJ Char is going to score the most fantasy points why not wait a few more picks and get LaVisca Nice, good floor. Um, I know you guys want upside or just get Marvin Jones, who almost made my sleeper list. Marvin Jones, you can get him like in round 11. Like I say, it's probably going to be the wide receiver one. He still looks good. Look, every year he gets underdrafted and every year he overperforms. And they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. I like Marvin Jones. Moving on, let's go to tight ends all right this is a super super crazy list and i think this is the best way to help you guys so i got two tiers right so we got the top three tight ends in tier one and then we have the top six tight ends in tier two after that you're playing tight end roulette after that it's a total guess game you have no idea what's going to happen i have no idea what's going to happen so i'm thinking if you miss out on a top six tight end, if you miss out on Mark Andrews, TJ Hawkinson, you miss out on all those guys, my advice is to wait. Wait and wait some more. And if you got a deep bench, if your league allows it, your settings makes this practical, go ahead and try to draft three tight ends because you're going to be playing tight end roulette. So the more chips you put on that roulette table thingy, the more chances you're going to have your big number to hit, right? And win. Okay. So my first sleeper uh, going in at 12.04 ADP 
is Evan Ingram. Now, when we talk about guys we like to root for, this is a guy everyone makes fun of. He won Butterfingers of the Year last year and dropped a lot of clutch passes. He still ended up finishing tight end 14 and had just a number that will never, ever happen. I don't... <laughs> Hopefully not. Never say never, right? He only had one receiving touchdown last year. That number's got to go up this year, right? At least three touch. If he caught like five or six more touchdowns, it'd be a totally different game here. Um, and I know like you, you just can't add that or anything. All I'm saying is one receiving touchdown is low. I think a lot of us would expect that to go up. And you know what? When you draft Evan Ingram, you're not even drafting him as your tight end one, guys. Like, not even close. Sometimes he goes nearly undrafted because fantasy owners hate him so much. Now, last year, I was screaming that Evan Ingram was a bust. You get that? Where was he going? Around round seven? Something like that, if I remember correctly. Now he's going round 12. That's a huge difference. Everyone was drafting him. Tight end six off the board, tight end seven off the board, tight end four off the board, crazy stuff like that. So he was your tight end one. Like you, you like you were you were all in on Evan Ingram. Matter of fact, you've drafted Evan Ingram, you probably lost because of him. You were drafting him there. Now you get him in round 12, sometimes even round 13, rarely round 14. He's really falling that far the value is absolutely worth it he's going to be your tight end too next name more of a flyer but he's going in round 14 that's gerald everett rams passing coordinator now the seahawks offensive coordinator should fix some things up and gerald everett should win that job there could be some kind of committee seahawks tight ends don't work out too much this is purely a flyer but one that i really like and again gerald everett's nowhere near your tight end one he's more closer to your tight end three if you're drafting three tight ends then you're tight end one so you don't really have to worry about it also keep in mind if you do draft multiple tight ends you ideally don't want them to have the same bye week but it's not a requirement it's just something you might want to look at just so you don't draft three tight ends with the same bye week that's going to be kind of poopy for you next up we got cole Komet going at the exact same spot as gerald everett and everything everything screams breakout we got jimmy graham ahead of him who's past his prime and probably is not going to be there next year we'll see i don't know how long he's going to last this year so we got jimmy graham ahead of him cole Komet's looking good we've seen some flashes of him playing well and he's going so low that he could just shatter this adp if we're looking at all the boxes to check off for a super late round tight end right because if jimmy graham wasn't there Cole Komet would be going like round seven or eight, right? Or at least eight or nine, right around there. He'd be going super high, right around where maybe Logan Thomas is going or a little earlier. But since Jimmy Graham is there, we can get him an absolute steal. Again, Cole Komet going nearly undrafted in a lot of leagues. Now this next guy I'm not excited about at all. Uh, but I do want to give you guys just another option. If more of the sexy names like Everett or Komet are gone, you can go with a boring name, a quote unquote has been, is what some people would call it, or post hype uh, player. And that's Zach Ertz. He used to be really good. But look at what was wor working against him last year when he put up really abysmal stats and looked really bad. Well, the Eagles were tanking. Now, were they tanking the whole season? No, but they definitely were tanking that last game. He had an ankle injury. He was placed on IR and they had a crazy and weird quarterback play, right? We've seen the worst of Carson Wentz we've ever seen. We've seen Jalen Hurts look good, look bad. And then we've seen this other guy who I'm not going to be able to think of his name when they were tanking that last week. And it was just, it was just a mess of a year and everyone got fired and so on so forth so we got to throw that year out the window now again this is not a hype video on Ertz I admit he is boring I'm not in love with drafting Ertz it's just another option if you really want a tight end too and those other names aren't there Zach Ertz is being slept on people 
hate him. People are forgetting about him. Now, he is a little bit older. I think tight ends could perform at his age. So that is working against him as well. Nonetheless, he's been a stud. I think he can do it. All he's got to do is stay healthy to absolutely shatter his round 13 ADP. Now, what did I say earlier? If you're playing tight end roulette, ladies and gentlemen, you may want to draft three tight ends. Now, I get if you have five bench spots, it's impossible to do this. Don't draft three tight ends if you have five bench spots. But some people are in deep leagues. If you're in a 16-team league or you're in a league with nine bench spots, something like that, and you want to play tight end roulette, you want to step up and risk it, then you might want one of these tight end threes. You think we're going to stop there? That's not going to happen. You know I'm going to talk about defenses and kickers. All right, here we go, guys. So basically, I don't do tiers with defense, but if I had to, I'd say the top defenses are the Bucks, Rams, Niners, Ravens, Steelers, and Washington football team defense, okay? So those are the top defenses. If you miss out on them, then you might want to look elsewhere. And I'm usually going with the Broncos D. They're the 12th defense taken off the board. Look at this schedule here. They're facing the Giants week one, then the Jaguars, then the Jets. So decent schedule, and they should be a good bunch. Put up decent fantasy points. Super sleeper defense. Now, I love the Browns D as a unit. Keep in mind, they do play the Chiefs week one. They're the 10th defense going off the board super risky because you just can't really start the Browns defense week one but if you have enough bench spots if you use a little bit of couch certified IR glitch you know put a guy in IR and you're able to stash the Browns week two they play the Texans and the Browns could literally put up like 30 fantasy points that week. Um, and then a super sleeper defense for deeper leagues. Defense number 24 off the board, Carolina Panthers. For kickers, always wait until the last round or don't even draft a kicker at all. Most platforms don't require you to. If you can't find Tyler Bass or Rodrigo Blankenship in the very last round, I like those two kickers. You can often find Robbie Gould. Week one, Niners are facing the Lions. Again, that's a good defense. And for the kicker, it's going to be a lot of extra points and a lot of settling for field goals in the fourth quarter because the Niners are slated to have the lead. It should be one of the most lopsided game scripts of week one. Lots of field goals, lots of extra points for Robbie Gould. Oh, by the way, he's very talented. Only knock against Robbie Gould is his age. He's getting a little bit older, uh, but should still be one of the best kickers in the league talent-wise. And then I have another kicker who I'm very, very excited about. This could be the next Yunwei Koo. That's Evan McPherson on the Bengals. Just an absolute phenom kicker. Didn't land on the best team or anything like that, but he's so dang good and so exciting to watch that if you miss out on all the kickers, on all the rankings and you're in a deep league Evan McPherson is your guy I'm telling you guys right now this could be the next elite kicker and the Bengals went out their way to draft him because he's that good and they haven't had a good kicker in a long time so I think this actually was a smart draft pick by the Bengals and for my bust I'm gonna go with Yan Wei Koo I'm a huge fan of his. I still have him as a top five kicker, but most have him as a top three kicker. Make sure you guys check out my previous draft videos, especially that couch draft party video if you haven't watched it already. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. We have a second YouTube channel. It's called Fantasy Couch Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to that one as well. Hope you enjoyed the annual Sleepers and Bust video. Ladies and gentlemen, good luck this year in fantasy, and I'll catch you on the next video.